Hello everyone, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program with me, JD Kali. As you can see here, we've got another rocket on the launch pad. It looks a little different than previous ones, and it has an awfully big fairing on there. So before we uh, get this thing all the way up into orbit, let's go take a look at what is actually inside. And here is the Network Administrator 1 that we've just launched. As you can see, it's not a terribly cheap vessel coming in at 70,000 credits, but it's not terribly expensive either for what it's doing for us, because this will enable us to really begin to do some real work in the uh, the Kerbin sector. Now, obviously not beyond it, but at least being able to get out to the moon and uh, min miss, this is, this is the thing we really need to do first. So if we take off the payload fairing, we can get an idea of what's going on. And uh, we have four little satellites, basically. Um, they have small fuel tank, four um, comms DTSM1s, a whole bunch of little teeny tiny photovoltaic cells, and uh, a little itty bitty engine. Now this mini aerospike, it comes from uh, the, what is it, the rockets, the little rockets, what are they called? Sounding rockets, it's a sounding rocket motor, but it's very nice because it's extremely light for what it does. Honestly, it's probably not balanced because it has uh, a max thrust of nine, and this, where is it? There's another one, another little tiny engine like this that has about uh, twice the thrust, but well, maybe five times the weight. So I don't know that it's technically balanced, like you compare it to this. Uh, I don't know. You can fit a few more of these in the same weight for a little, for slightly more, but I don't know, maybe it's balanced correctly. Never mind, never mind. Actually, it is. Okay, so cool. I'm not cheating. Awesome. So. If we take a little closer look, let's just pull this off, because, you know, it looks weird. Uh, oh, that is the root. Never mind. Let's root this. There we go. Take that off. As you can see, it's a fairly simple satellite. Um, not a lot going on here. We don't have any reaction wheels. There's no nothing really complicated. Just one uh, tweak-scaled battery for 1600 charge. And enough comm sat or enough uh, comm ZTSM ones to really cover everything in the Kerbin system. So there you go. That's our uh, the satellites. We're launching four of them. We're going to have them 90 degrees apart, hopefully. Uh, so just four of them in LKO, and we will get that up there. So for those of you who may be unfamiliar with how a satellite network functions, I figured I'd explain a little bit what we're doing here. Uh, my plan is to put those four satellites up into a low Kerbin orbit, equidistant around Kerbin. Um, with each satellite having a line of sight on two other satellites in the network. That way the all will have a connection to each other, and then because each satellite has four comms DTSs on it, one will be able to be pointed at the Watchkeeper satellite in geosynchronous orbit, then one will be pointed on at the moon, one at Minmus, and then one finally at the active vessel. And that's that'll be set up or the same setup on each satellite. That way, any vessel that is in low Kerbin orbit will have an omni connection to these satellites because, like I said, they're all in omni range of each other. And then any vessel that goes to anywhere else in the Kerbin system can simply point at Kerbin, and because of the active vessel point, they'll, uh, they'll you know, anything within 50 million meters of Kerbin and ha that has a comms ETS pointed at Kerbin that's active will have a connection, basically. Um, and then any satellites that are pointed at the moon or pointed at Kerbin from the moon or Minmus will also have an active connection at all times. So basically, this allows us to operate probes with impunity pretty much anywhere in the Kerbin sphere of influence, which is really, really awesome for our near future um, experiments and uh, activities. And of course, we'll have to increase the satellite network, we'll have to improve it as we go on because we have to increase the range if we want to be able to say go to Duna with probes but that is actually pretty easy to do because you don't need to have nearly as comprehensive a satellite network because it can just simply connect to this one so yeah um, as you saw there I opened a whole bunch of solar panels because well these things need a lot of power for all those comms DTS's relative you know, a relatively large amount of power for this point in career mode obviously it's not unblocked compared to later but uh, yeah so everything set up there and I think I think we're about to circularize. There we go. And uh, there we go. Back to old me. All right. And with that, we appear to have reached a stable orbit. Excellent. We even have enough fuel to easily deorbit our lower stage. I still haven't figured out what the payload capacity on this is. And of course, with those uh, little boosters I stuck on there, it 
was greatly uh, increased, but uh, yeah, I haven't figured it out yet. And that's our debris heading back to Kerbin. Excellent. Okay, so now what we need to do is deploy our vessels in a pattern around this area. So, first thing that must be done is make sure that each one of them has a connection to our watchkeeper, which is our geostationary um, satellite over there. Now, obviously, they won't all be able to operate using the watchkeeper because if they're on the opposite side of the planet from it, then we'll have a problem, but that's okay because, well, these guys are intended to overcome that particular issue. So, I'm going to target all of them to the watchkeeper and turn them all on. And then also activate the, where are, did I put that on brakes? We'll put it, check and see if I put it on brakes. I did, I put it on brakes. I know I'm hoping we won't have a clipping issue because they are going up into the uh, probe above them in each case, but it should be all right. So now that we have all of them connected and the uh, Omni antenna attached, and for those of you who don't know, an Omni antenna is an antenna that does not require a point, like it doesn't require a target, it can just communicate with any satellite in range that also has an Omni antenna, so very useful. But uh, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to release the top probe. Decouple, and with a little luck he's still connected. Let's see. Is he still connected to the network? He is. Okay, cool. So now, hmm, we could just leave this guy here, actually. This could be our number one commsat. In fact, I think that is what we'll do. So we're not even going to turn on his engine. We're just going to let him drift away. I'm going to activate our target. Let's see. The moon. Activate. And where's the next one? Target Minmus. And finally, for the last one, I don't usually do this, but I am for this. I am going to target active vessel. Now, this isn't terribly useful unless the active vessel is targeting or uh, Kerbin, but it usually will be with a uh, antenna, so it's not a huge problem. And so, with that, we have now set up. Our first set of com, or our first comsat. This one is now set. I don't need to turn on the engine or anything. He's just ready to go. And so this will be our. Let's see, rename vessel. LK or LKO com, eh, sat one. And then let's look at our orbital period. It is. 49 minutes, 29 seconds, and, or, yeah, 29.03 seconds. That's a fairly short orbital, peri orbital period, but it's okay. And now back to our other vessel. No, that's not a vessel. That's a small piece of space debris. Okay, so now we're on to this little guy. So we're going to decouple him. Actually, we're going to save, just to make sure nothing stupid happens. Okay this little guy. He's going to bump into his space debris. That is fine. I'm going to activate the engine and we need him to point prograde. Yeah, I think prograde. So now what we're going to do... Ooh, that was close. We almost lost the solar panel there. That would have been bad. So we're going to turn on our engine and we're going to raise our peri or apoapsis up a bit to... Mm, I don't know. We'll see. Let's raise it up to 340. Or, yeah. Now, this isn't a huge issue, like moving stuff around. It obviously has enough delta V to go pretty much to Duna. But still, we want to set his target. That'll work because both of those vessels are in the same. Uh, will have the same location for a while, they have the same orbital period. So we're, what we need to look at now is the phase angle to target. And I want to change this by 90 degrees. So we're going to time accelerate, which we can do a bit faster because we're in a higher orbit now. And as you can see, as I start to approach my apoapsis, this is changing. There we go. 
Let's see how many degrees is it going to change by? Just one degree per orbit or per oh, okay. 1.7 or 1.8, 1.9, I don't know, something like that. Two degrees and almost every half orbit. That's going to take a while, but that's okay. So we're just going to accelerate this, and it will take some time, but that's okay because we also have these guys who we need to get back eventually. And our goal is to make this a 90 degree value here. And we can leave these guys up here for as long as another six hours after this, I believe. You know what? Actually, I'm going to switch. Just take care of that. Just so that we don't lose uh, Jeb. Because I don't want Jeb to die of, like, lack of, you know, life support. So I'm going to take care of that really quick and come back. Okay. If you look here, we have now reached 90 degrees of phase angle, and uh, during the interim, I did have Jeb return the Fate 70. If you look here, we have completed the contract, got some money and a lot of science. Excellent. So yeah, he's back on base, and we can use him again for another mission. And I've got to tell you, speaking of missions, I have got to do this one right here, put a, a satellite in this orbit, because holy crap is it confusing me. Like, it's almost the same color as my target, and just too many green lines, really. It is, it, oh, it's horrible. Anyway, so what we need to do now is we need to circularize at that location right there. So I'm just going to put a little maneuver node there and just smack it a little bit. I'm not actually using this. I just want to basically, you know, know when I need to burn. And uh, I swear the orbital period is wrong, but I, I don't know. We'll see. So anyway... We should not move too much in terms of our phase angle now as we approach the uh, periapsis. We'll get up to 91, but that's fine. You don't need it to be sp like exactly 90 degrees. You just need it to be fairly close. So, all right, let's check really quick. It's 4929.03. Okay, and let's turn that to retrograde. And a few seconds to our periapsis. We'll drop a quick save. Quick save just to be sure and as soon as we're near our periapsis we're not going to pay attention to the maneuver node because it doesn't matter we'll just drop this down to about 20 no we'll watch the uh, orbital period more than we will the actual height because the actual height doesn't matter 4929 right so we went a little too far got a little overzealous there so a great way to adjust orbits really, really precisely is to click, right-click on your engine and drop the thus, thrust limiter, that thrust limiter, down as far as you can. Um, the lowest you can get is or, uh, five. Below that, it won't actually go any lower, but it's hard to get the five. Five point five, six point five is about the lowest you usually get it. You know, without fussing with it a lot. So, okay, I'm just gonna raise that just a teensy tiny bit, and as you can see, we're moving in. You know tenths of uh, seconds now, which is what we want to be moving in. Go away, maneuver node, we don't care. And just half a second more. And there we go. That is pretty much going to keep us in exactly the same position relative to this as it orbits. Now granted, the orbits may not be exactly the same, so there may be some slight movement in terms of the relative phase angle, but that's okay. Like, it doesn't matter, because when they, like, this will always come back to this point relative to that one, which is pretty much perfect. They'll maintain their orbits, in other, word, in other words, their relative orbits. So we're just going to shut that down so I don't accidentally screw that up. It's very important. Always turn off your engines on uh, satellites. You just, yeah, it helps, really. So we're going to or orient this back to normal, just to keep a consistent amount of energy coming in, regardless of uh, where it's orbiting. And uh, from what I could tell, as it was orbiting around, we seem to have enough power, pretty much, so it wasn't turning off or anything, I'm hoping. We'll see, I don't know, we, we should probably do another orbit just to make sure. This may not have enough power to run all of the um, various little dishes we're going to have turned on here at, on the dark side of Kerbin. Because being in such low orbit, it does have a long dark period. Like, quite a long time. 
uh, which I don't like. It's one of the reasons I actually prefer to put them in higher orbits is because they just they can spend more time in the sunlight. But and so even if they do go down in the dark, you know, if you look here, this orbit is you know the dark side constitutes maybe you know, what a third. It's a very large chunk of our orbit, like a line from there and a line from there. Whereas say this orbit, that is a less than a tenth of the orbit. So your uptime, your relative uptime, is much higher. But let's uh, just kick up our time acceleration and uh, see what happens. 90%. Now, granted, I will say that time acceleration does bad, bad things to power generation. Like for some reason, power gen like it's not correct. Um, whatever the game does to calculate uh, power consumption when there are no or there's no light or even when there is light it's incorrect during dark periods for some reason that I don't understand but it is so yeah that's a problem um, six minutes how far away is that point eight minutes okay so we will lose power on these satellites temporarily that's unfortunate I don't like to see that but there's not really much I can do about it So when are we going to lose power? 2% Okay, that's not too bad. I mean, we can see the light side coming up right here. So about two minutes of downtime before that. Oh, maybe not even two minutes. Okay, that's acceptable. I don't like it, but it is within what I am willing to work with. So I'm going to do the rest of the um, the satellites and it's basically the exact same process. I'm just going to adjust the orbit either up or down in order to move the satellites relative to our network administrator um, probe here and uh, just get them to 90 degrees relative um, phase angle to the next satellite and then we'll have a little diamond of satellites up here. And that way, we'll be able to put a satellite into orbit anywhere around here, and it will always have a connection to the KSC, unless it's like a polar orbit. But even then, it should probably have a connection so long as it's, you know, not sitting on top of the poles. So, I will return when I have gotten that done. Okay, if you look at this here, we'll just focus on Kerbin. You can see a nice diamond shape of probes. And uh, I did deorbit that uh, larger section you can see it's crashed here. I didn't have enough parachutes on it, so yeah, it went smooshed. Oh, I did have enough parachutes. I wonder why it smooshed. That's odd. Oh well, I'm not going to worry about it too much. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, so there we go. We now have an actually functional ComSat network, which is excellent. We really did need that. It was going to be very important. And uh, yeah, so we can now begin uh, probe operations pretty much anywhere in this area and definitely begin putting up networks around the moon and Minmus. Anyway, it's about time to call it an episode, but uh, we were able to complete our network, as you can see here, which is very awesome. It did take a while, and I apologize for that, but to be honest, these things always take time. And uh, there you can see we finally finished our altimetry scan of the moon. It's 100% complete, which is very awesome. We got 40 science from that, which is also very awesome. But that does mean we are now in a position to begin our uh, landed missions and follow that up with some manned ones. But anyway, if you liked what you saw, please leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you next time.